Hey Goblin Brigade, what's going on? It's me, Spooky Goblin. We're back in the Goblin Kitchen, the channel where we upload here twice a week. Usually on Mondays and usually on Wednesdays. Sometimes I do a cooking video where I take your favorite fast food menu item and I flip them into something a little bit more healthy. Or in my other kind of video, which I got on my thinking cap today, I usually do a vlog style where I just go over some issues with the diet culture and health related issues with losing weight when you're uh, like me in your mid 40s and how difficult that to be with all the BS out there. So that's what we're doing today. In today's video, I'm going over the five, count one, two, three, four, five. The top five reasons why you, yeah, you, should reconsider doing keto, guys. So if you're ready, Mount up, follow me back to the cave, and let's talk about this for gay. When you feel it's helpless, when you think that you lost, oh, I will take your hand and we'll rise up from the dust. Hey, thank you guys so much for joining me right here in the Goblin Kitchen. Today, we are going over the top five reasons why you should avoid the keto diet. My name is Spooky Goblin. Uh, if you want, you can follow me over on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I post a lot of recipe videos and food pictures over there. Plus, I document my weekly weigh-ins uh, on all those sites. So, go and check them out. Always uh, good times. It's fun. And yeah, let's get right into it today. So, the reason why we're here today, we are going to talk about the keto diet a little bit. The top five reasons. Yeah. My number one reason why I try to avoid this uh, diet is because it focuses a lot on fat. <laughs> and as everybody should know by now, fat has twice as many calories as proteins and carbs. Per every gram of fat, there's nine calories. Carbs and proteins both have uh, four grams. I mean, you can just kind of have a little macro breakdown right here. The keto diet is very high in fat, moderate in protein, and very low in carbs. The keto uh, macros are as follows. Almost 70% in fat. Now, let's say you don't know any better and you are a person that's desperate and trying to drop some weight and you stumble across this keto diet and you start, start following it, but you fail to realize that you also still have to maintain you, uh, yourself in a calorie deficit. And if you don't know any better, you're going to start eating as much as you want when it comes to the foods that's allowed on this diet, thinking that you're actually losing weight. In reality, you're still in a surplus, so pretty much you're just eating yourself in the foot. So 25% of protein makes up this diet, which, I mean, if you're trying to work out, you need a little bit more protein than that, especially if you're trying to gain some muscle. And just 25% uh, is just very low. And only 5% carbs. And only All carbohydrates. What that means is they support the uh, muscle growth. They hydrate your muscles as they're growing and they give them the energy source that it needs so you know they can get big and strong and uh, carry on with the workload that you put on them at the gym. So when you're doing a diet like this you are uh, severely at risk of going through muscle mass more than you are fat. So that is reason number one why I don't like this diet. Let's uh, go down to uh, other reason. Reason number two. The short-term side effects, man. Now, while to some people this might not be a big deal, but if you are extremely obese, chances are you uh, have some other underlying health condition like type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And anytime you start putting your body through anything extra that's going to give you flu-like symptoms, Right here it says, during the transition phase when the body switches over 
as fuel supply from uh, glucose to ketones, it experiences flu-like symptoms, also called a keto flu. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to do any kind of diet that's going to be <laughs> sick right off the bat. I mean, you're pretty much just uh, hitting your head up against the wall at that point. During the first few days, the body loses a lot of water. So, not only are you making yourself sick, you're also dehydrating yourself. And again, when you're hitting the gym and trying to put on some muscle mass, this could be a very bad day for you. You're just going to have a bad time with it, guys. Sodium and other minerals like potassium, magnesium, and other uh, sizzles impact the initial weight loss. It's due to water loss and not fat loss. So again, the initial drop that everybody sees in the first couple weeks is actually just water weight. So you're not even really losing fat. You're just dehydrating the heck out of yourself. And your body's uh, compensating for that on the scale. So when you step on a scale, it might have a 20 pound of weight loss. But in reality, you may have only lost a pound. And along with that, you're suffering some of these side effects as well. Symptoms like uh, dehydration, frequent urination, excessive thirst, dizziness, drowsiness, headaches, and muscle cramps. I mean, this does not sound like a good time to me, guys. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I would rather be a little bit on the heavy side and have to put up with any stuff like this for even a week or so. Okay, reason number three, guys. Uh, low blood sugar or hypoglycemia is another horrible side effect. And this can be a very bad situation for a diabetic or anybody with any kind of co uh, compromised immune system. Uh, the notable symptoms during the transition phase includes fatigue, hunger, confusion, anxiety, irritability, lightheadedness, uh, sickiness, uh, sweating, and chills. I mean... I really am getting kind of irritable just reading stuff like this because, like I said before, it's pseudo sites like this that can discourage somebody from actually getting healthy and in shape. Yeah, I hear. Another side effect is smelly, breath, and uh, constipation. I'm just going to lump these two together because, you know, if you have one, chances are you're going to have the other one. Uh, Say you're a smoker in your own keto and you have to deal with the, uh, the smell of the cigarettes and the smell from the side effects of a keto diet, you know, you can forget about being six feet apart. Ain't nobody going to be uh, want to be within 10 feet of you after, uh, you know, being around this. Diacone is one of uh, the ketones bodies and it has a characteristic, a characteristic, Fruity smell similar to that of nail polish remover. Nail polish remover. Ah, man. I mean, come on, y'all. What are we talking about here? I mean, really? And like I said, uh, along with that is the uh, patient aspect of it. And we all know what that feels like from one time or another. You can have a drastic change in your diet composition. Occasionally, some people also experience diarrhea due to the high fat diet. Again, that's that. When you start neglecting the food group from a balanced diet, you're going to experience some sort of side effects. I mean, the, all the food groups are there for a reason. There's no, not really a such, uh, no such thing as like a bad food. As long as you go in moderation and you handle, you handle yourself responsibly, you can pretty much eat whatever you want, but you have to maintain a calorie deficit. My number five reason for not doing the keto, my personal number five, it's a freaking cost, y'all. I was looking at a site earlier on uh, another video I did about a week ago. It's right there somewhere. Uh, and it says some of these supplements, like the ketogenic uh, shakes and stuff that they're marketing, can cost you upwards uh, in the neighborhood of $390 a month, man. I mean, come on, all they're really doing is ripping you off and taking your money from you. They're not concerned with anybody's actual weight. They're just trying to make the profits because that's what, like, evil corporations like to do. So, again, you have to be careful when you're choosing a weight loss plan. As always, you need to consult with your doctor.
Uh, I'm not you. licensed in any kind of way. I'm just an average guy that's been through the gambit of these trendy diets and these diet fads. I've tried all of them, guys, and the only thing that's working for me is this high protein, uh, low calorie diet I'm doing now. And when I say low calorie, I'm still eating around 2,200, 2, calories calories a day. I'm keeping my protein around 170 to 180 grams. I'm a bigger guy, so trying to get a gram of protein per pound is difficult, and I'll probably end up putting me in a surplus. But I've never felt better. I went and did like 7,000 steps outside today and yesterday, too. I've been working on getting outside a little bit more, moving more. Uh, my energy levels are up here. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm down to 295 from 317. And that, my Goblin Brigade, is true magic. So until next time, guys, just use some common sense. Don't do anything extreme. Enjoy the food you love. Live to play, play to live. Stay entertained. And I will see you guys later. <laughs>